Assalamu alaikum. Today lecture is about managing patients who have an enteritic lumpa. And it will be the first part. Uh, as patients in the ICU, uh, any patient need to be monitored. Uh, in this lecture, we emphasize the important part of the enteritic balloon pump, the position of the patient, and then how to detect the complication. Uh, general assessment. Uh, for general rule, all patients in the ICU should have head up to prevent uh, VAB and some things, but in patient who has uh, enteritic balloon pump shouldn't uh, uh, have head more than uh, 30 degree uh, or revert to the brick position uh, so as to avoid kinking of the balloon. Uh, also checking the pulse at the lower extremities and uh, the beadal, dorsal beads pulse, so as to avoid presence of distal ischemia. Uh, checking brachial and radial pulse uh, if to avoid uh, the presence of the balloon in a too high position, monitoring urine output uh, also to avoid too low position, also urine output may be low due to low cardiac output status. Monitor skin uh, integrity to avoid uh, uh, skin breaking down due to uh, immobilization of the patient. Uh, the balloon should be explained to the patient and the family so as to de decrease the, the, the anxiety of the patient and the stress uh, uh, of the family. Three sites to be checked for uh, the position of intraatric balloon pump, distal pulse in, uh, by, by Doppler in, uh, uh, in uh, dorsal speedis and uh, anterior tibial artery. Uh, site of the insertion for the presence of the bleeding, so we should put transparent dressing uh, at the site of the insertion. And also the position of the balloon in x-ray, should, it should be in the second and uh, between the second and third intercostal space to avoid a high or low uh, insertion of the balloon. Daily monitoring of anti-aortic balloon pump first will be due to improper functioning. Uh, improper function may be due to a uh, long time for of stand, uh, standby mode of the balloon. Uh, loss of trigger and mechanical failure of the balloon result in ability to inflate and deflate into arctic balloon pump. The assessment can be done through uh, evaluating arterial waveform for the historic augmentation. Uh, also observing the, the monitor for the presence of the waveform. Observe the balloon movement uh, through the balloon uh, curve in the uh, monitor so we can see um, uh, proper inflation and deflation of the balloon. And how we correct that? We first we resuming the pump if appreciate like don't allow the balloon to remain immobile or in standby mode more than 30 minutes. If the balloon is not not functioning well, we can inflate the balloon and deflate using a syringe um, and the stop clock once every five minutes with 40 cc of air uh, till we get another uh, functioning uh, console. The second part in daily monitoring of anti balloon pump, including major, major visits. And this can be uh, through weak uh, uh, left radial pulse or left arm ischemia. Uh, so the caster will be uh, high in the X-ray. Withdraw the caster and confirm the position in X-ray. Uh, Interaortic balloon pump between the second and third intercostal space. And this is not too high to occlude the uh, uh, left subclavian artery and not too low to occlude uh, renal, uh, left renal artery. Third thing of uh, daily monitoring is occluding the renal artery. It can be represented by low urine output. And this is, can be checking the patient condition, which indicated hyperfusion, and the check of the position of antiotic balloon pump, which may be too low to be. Um, to be uh, too low to occlude the renal artery, advance the so uh, the management we should advance the catheter uh, up till we confirm the position by X ray. Fourth cause in daily monitoring of antiaortic balloon pump is damage or absent pressure waveform. Uh, this is occurred especially with conventional antiaortic balloon caster, which didn't have a fibro optic. And uh, to assess that, we can use uh, put the intraortic balloon pump in uh, standby mode, then aspirate the lumen, inner lumen or central lumen, whatever the chimerical type of the caster. If the line is patent, we can flush the lumen uh, for 15 seconds 
to confirm uh, there is no damping or uh, damping and starting to measure the blood pressure. In this photo, there is a standard dedicated arterial blood pressure monitoring setup. Monitor arterial pressure uh, through uh, the through the dedicated lumen, and we can use hyperonized saline uh, uh, to maintain the patency of this lumen unless the patient condition is contraindicated, uh, like uh, hyperinduced thrombocytopenia. Connecting a pressure tubing extension to prepare standard arterial pressure monitoring simply is recommended to maintain line patency. Also, we should avoid blood sampling from the from that lumen so as to decrease formation of thrombosis within the central lumen. If the hospital policy or patient situation uh, or, uh, allowing uh, or need to uh, manipulate or flushing this lumen, so the pump console should be uh, placed in a standby mode to prevent any emboli to um, aortic arch. Arterial pressure line should be uh, changed based on uh, the hospital guidelines or the current condition of the patient. The uh, inner lumen and the castor inner lumen, how we take a spread uh, uh, a spread blood to to ensure its patency, then flushing the line with hypsaline uh, to uh, prevent the formation of the thrombus. Again, uh, we recommended uh, to um, so recommended that arterial flush apparatus deliver th three cc per hour for flushing the solution, so as to maintain the inner lumen patency. If the inner lumen aortic pressure signal become damped, so first we should aspirate and discard 3 cc of blood. If unable to aspirate, consider an inner lumen clotted, uh, cap the lumen, provide alternate pressure source. If you are able to uh, flush or aspirate, fast flushing to clear the pressure tubing at least 50, 15 seconds. Uh, with an uh, aortic balloon should be in standby mode. Don't sample from the inner lumen. This is very important slide in managing the aortic balloon pump. Now we will come about in, in, uh, in a cross revision for patient condition while he is in the aortic balloon pump. Here the patient has ectopics, so we will see the uh, the ectopic reflection on the arterial wave and ectopic uh, reflection on the balloon inflation. So here, uh, this is the ectopics uh, for both of the slides. Again, here the patient is in atrial fibrillation. Uh, this is atrial fibrillation, and this is improper uh, diastolic augmentation for interaortic balloon pump. And from uh, the inflation of the balloon, we will see different uh, part uh, of the inflation of the balloon. This is the balloon properly inflated. This is a balloon short. Uh, due to tachycardia, uh, frequent uh, pulses due to tachycardia. If you look here, there is a pause due to uh, atrial fibrillation and the irregularity of the pulse. Uh, here, normal sinus rhythm and normal, uh, normal uh, augmentation of the balloon, good augmentation. Here, ventricular uh, uh, tachycardia and abnormal augmentation of the balloon reflected on uh, 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 improper inflation of the balloon. As I mentioned before in the pre in previous lecture, when he has a CBR, should we use antiaortic balloon or not? We mentioned yes, we can use antiaortic balloon, and we can use it on a, a inter 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 internal trigger. So as there is no cardiac um, cardiac activity, so can we use a internal trigger? But if the patient started to have intrinsic cardiac activity, internal trigger shouldn't be used, as this can cause incorrect timing and impairing in patient hemodynamic. So if the once ECG or arterial pressure signal has been reestablished, the trigger mode must be changed from internal trigger to acceptable patient trigger, whatever is arterial trigger or ECG trigger. As a part of monitoring, we should uh, monitor to detect the adverse effects and complication of the antiaortic balloon pump. First thing is limb ischemia. And uh, limb ischemia can occur due to thrombus formation or uh, creation of intimal layer separation uh, or presence of lab or presence of uh, the introducer uh, sheath or antiaortic balloon caster in the artery which is obstructed the blood flow. 
the assessment can be done through first checking the distal pulses, skin color, temperature, and capillary fill. And this should be done uh, every nursing shift, uh, every uh, eight uh, hours. Uh, this is uh, based on or based on each hospital policy. And the checking of the pulse can through uh, arteri uh, arterial Doppler. Uh, the correction is we should can kind of change uh, the, the balloon to the opposite side uh, and uh, or after removal the balloon we can check the limb ischemia and a uh, vascular consultation uh, also monitoring of the distal limb for the development of compartmental syndrome this picture of uh, doubler which used uh, to scan uh, to scan uh, the arterial pulse wave daily uh, to uh, to avoid presence of uh, ischemia, ischemia uh, unnoticed. Uh, the second adverse effect is bleeding at the site of insertion, and that can occur due to uh, first a trauma to the artery during the insertion of the balloon, excessive caster movement at the insertion site, supratherapeutic anticoagulation, and the assessment is through excessive bleeding from the insertion site. And we mentioned before, the dressing at the insertion site should be transparent to allow us to monitoring the bleeding below uh, this is dressing. And the correction, the bleeding should be controlled by direct pressure on the ins insertion site while assuring adequate distal blood flow. If the bleeding pers persists, the surgical repair of the insertion site may be uh, indicated. The third uh, adverse effect is infection. The infection is inter uh, interruption of the normal skin integrity at the site of antiaortic balloon insertion. And uh, we can assess that by observing the insertion site for the signs of infection, assess the patient for the development of castor related infection, and uh, uh, for the correction, we can change the site of insertion and the treatment castor related infection if it's severe or uh, it's resistant. Uh, Depending on uh, the current situation, we, we can remove the balloon if the patient tolerates or change it to other site. Another common uh, side adverse effect is thrombocytopenia, and it occurs due to mechanical damage of the platelet. And we can assess the thrombocytopenia through the platelet count, and the correction can be by giving a platelet replacement if needed. An important adverse effect is thrombosis, and this is occurred due to immobility of anti-aortic balloon pump, can occur due to low flow cardiac output, or there is aortic injury associated with anti-aortic balloon pump replacement, case of vascular resistance associated with the balloon replacement, and this can be done through uh, symptoms uh, associated with thrombosis formation or uh, thrombotic emboli depending on the organ involved, and the treatment uh, depending on the organ involved by embolic manifestation. A very high risk uh, side effect and very rare is uh, aortic dissection and damage to aorta during anti-aortic balloon insertion. And uh, this is, can be by assessed patient for pack or abdominal pain, or there is a decrease in uh, hematocrit of the patient or there is hemodynamic instability increasing after stability after insertion of the balloon. So uh, first you should do our to gram uh, to uh, uh, see if there is a suspected tear. Removal of the balloon will be necessary. Surgical repair of the aorta is necessary also. One of the series and very high risk complication is damage of the balloon uh, during insertion and we, if, we, if we suspect anti-aortic balloon pump perforation. How can we uh, suspect that? Uh, if we usually monitor extracorporeal uh, tubing and castor extending tubing if, if there is any blood or uh, dried uh, particles. Uh, also monitoring the patient for sudden change in diastolic augmentation. And to correct that, a blood in the extracorporeal uh, uh, or in castor tubing, we should stop pumping by put the, uh, the antiaortic balloon in standby mode and disconnect the castor and extender from the balloon, clamping the extracorporeal tubing between y, uh, y fitting, and we should uh, notifying uh, the, all the multidisciplinary team for the prepare of anti-aortic balloon removal and insertion of another one. Uh, this is a balloon for uh, uh, after removal from, from the patient. 
showing presence of the blood inside uh, the balloon. This means the balloon is perforated. Uh, other indicator of the perforation, sudden change in diastolic augmentation. Here, uh, uh, there is a diastolic augmentation. There is sudden change uh, in diastolic augmentation. And if we see uh, here, uh, here there is a good augmentation. Uh, there is no augmentation here. The balloon started is no, um, uh, there is no uh, balloon inflation even. So there is a possible uh, alarm for antiartic balloon pump and there is a change in the uh, augmentation. So one of the uh, suspected um, troubleshooting here is antiartic balloon perforation. Antiartic balloon perforation, uh, there is a potential alarm which is that may indicate antiartic balloon perforation. Uh, it may occur during autofill, autofill failure as the blood is suspected or generally autofill. And uh, if there is gas loss in the anti-aortic anti balloon circuit or gas gain or uh, anti-aortic balloon restriction, regularly inspect the anti-aortic balloon tubing for the presence of the blood during the therapy and when uh, the, there is mentioned alarm. Never disregard these alarms as they may help to identify balloon uh, perforation earlier. So uh, what we should do? First place the console in the standby mode Disconnect the castor uh, extender tubing from the anti-aortic console to allow the balloon to deflate. Uh, clamp the extracorporeal tubing from that side uh, between the Y uh, connector so as to take off the balloon and change it. This is the reference of this lecture for more uh, reading and uh, taking more, uh, more information about anti-aortic balloon pump. Thank you for listening to the lecture and uh, I am waiting for your question and uh, any comment in the comments below.